good one. I like again. I, I feel like it's fair to say I have a good one when I've actually recorded the episode, like if it's with a guest or something. But when it's just me, it's, it's a little presumptuous to say we have a good one. This could be total shit. I don't know what this one is going to be, but I have a feeling it's going to be a good one. And speaking of feeling, that's kind of what we're talking about today. Feeling is the secret. It's one of the core tenets of any of the imaginal stuff. I think if you if you do a deep dive into... Any kind of mystical teacher philosophy framework for working with reality and being an active participant in it, right? Not just assuming that something is happening to you. There is a huge part of it that has to do with feeling is the secret, right? That was one of Neville Goddard's like biggest tenets, but we forget about it. We forget and attach all of these other things to the stuff that we desire and would like to experience in life, right? So my new favorite thing to do is basically delve into the core meaning of what this shit actually is there for. What do we mean when we say feeling is the secret? Let's take a very clear example. Let's say you want a relationship. Let's say you're single. You have been wanting to have a relationship. Maybe the past relationships you've had have been unsatisfying or they just didn't work out or you're just struggling to find yourself in one. You start to believe that a relationship is going to satisfy that desire, that feeling of wanting or needing or love that you don't have, which paradoxically is the worst way to go about getting something that you want because you're feeding the delusion that you don't have it. I think the hardest thing to believe that I've found, right, the biggest mistake I've made at least when it's come to my life at various points, this is something I think you'd like necessarily like figure out and then you get it. So I want to dispel that notion and kind of like shatter the illusion that that's how things work. But when you go in out, when you go in out, when you are setting out to essentially satiate or satisfy a feeling of lack with something external at best you're going to get like temporary satisfaction temporary relief it's like putting a band-aid on something it's not actually healing what's going on and so when we think of like the feeling is the secret you don't really get attached to the specifics of the outcome and I think this is like something that a lot of us just struggle with at times and it can feel like things are out of our reach because we don't recognize that what we're looking for when we're talking about states states of consciousness emotions feelings is basically it's how would you feel not what's around you necessarily and visualization is awesome i don't want to make it seem like it's not visualization is fucking dope it's one of the coolest things you can do there are absolutely periods and situations where you visualize something and that almost to the t thing happens in reality which shows you kind of what's going on but it doesn't give you the complete picture because you could still make the misapprehension at that point that you're imagining something into existence or you're attracting something to you or you're even creating the scenario and or you could just say well this was something in reality that I've drawn towards me like I've moved it this is uh, I've spoken about this before but I do break with the law of attraction stuff a little bit because I don't think there is something inherently substantially real outside of what your experience of it is so it's not like there's a car out there <clears throat> and you want it really bad, and you're going to manifest it coming to you, it's almost like you are moving yourself to the point and coordinates in time space where you possess that, and you already have that. That's why I say the feeling is the secret, right? You really do need to recognize that if you're trying to do this, if this is something that's important to you, if it's something you genuinely like, resonate with on a heart level it's not thinky thinky right that's one of the things i want to be clear about you're not thinky thinking about this this is like a more heart-based approach i found when you are moving into flow states when things are kind of making themselves known to you you it's more of like a felt heart intuition and unconditional love has just been kind of becoming this uh, new not new i mean i i've i've resonated with that train of thought at many points during my life but it 
continues to be shown to me that that's basically the vibe that you emanate. And it's difficult at times because I think a lot of times we carry around self-judgments, we carry around judgments of other people, we otherize things, we fall into one of the vic- victim, villain, martyr roles that uh, Jessa has spoken about and I've spoken about a few times. Like, you know, it's easy to fall into those patterns. These are narratives that have worked for for seemingly forever, right? It's very easy to otherize different things. And even though we intellectually know that that's not really the right approach and that we can sense there's some unifying power that connects everyone together we don't always remember that and that's kind of what the game of life is it's falling out of like it's like selective amnesia but it can be so profound that you like genuinely forget what you're capable of and I think a lot of us also have experienced that we know the connection between what we are thinking and feeling what we would call a mental diet affects our reality if we're feeling low if we're feeling depressed if we're feeling like things just can't work or it's not possible what are the results you typically get in life you get a life that is validating that as an experience and you may then look out into the world and say well see the world is telling me that this is true therefore i know it's true and it's like a infinite hall of mirrors that's reflecting back this perception of reality does it mean that it's accurate no it's basically a hall of mirrors it's a distorted image of what actually is going on it's just to uncover and resonate and vibe at the level that you are truly experiencing what's going on um, is the game I would argue that what is truly going on is a unconditional love of a creative principle, you can call it whatever you want, that we get to as individual pieces of consciousness experience. It's basically a way for the one to experience itself through the many. And if you, it's kind of a weird concept, but if you understand that, you understand you are not fundamentally different than what God or a higher power or whatever you want to call it is, right? The father, the mother, whatever, whatever you're, your fan, there's no right answer to what that is. It is a felt thing and an intuited thing at its purest level that we can experience. And our minds are only capable right now in linear time and space of experiencing so many dimensions of consciousness, right? Sometimes you can expand your consciousness. You can do this through diet. You can do it through exercise. You can do it through drugs. You can do it through meditation. You can do it through whatever modality you want, through sex, anything. Pick your poison. There's so many ways to do it. But there is kind of like a threshold that we have right now to experience this for longer and longer states you do get mystics you do get people who are seemingly able to reside in states of consciousness that seem more stable and more kind of like you know in those bliss that you hear of like saints going into like samadhi and like these uh, amazing ecstatic states and like nirvana and all this stuff But for most people, that's not really what the game is. It's not just to get to that state and check out from reality. I think a lot of people want the experience of up and down and duality. I don't think it's a byproduct of some fall from grace or something that we need to correct. It's something that more like a game we're playing. Like if you were playing um, Candyland or Monopoly it's not like there's a problem that you're trying to solve. That's not how you're approaching the game. You're not like, oh, okay, well, I got to get to the end of Candyland because it's broken. And until I get to the end, then it's fixed. Or or I have to win at Monopoly because it's broke. It's like, no, you're playing a game. It's for entertainment. It's for fun. It ceases to feel fun and feel like it's for entertainment when the game it becomes life or death. When your mood is constantly being determined by everything that's going on outside of you. And so a lot of the process is becoming familiar, getting introduced to this idea that your mood and your feelings and your thoughts and your mental diet are quite literally affecting what you experience in your reality on a regular basis. That's number one, just becoming familiar with it. That's what people would probably call the awakening process, which, you know, if you have been through it, if you've gone through it, if you've been there for a while... It comes with its own set of challenges. It's not like just because you come into contact that there's a world larger than the one you previously conceived, everything is solved. You have like a high state of awareness that's going to be completely changing the game of everything that you've gone through. No, that's how you feel at the beginning. That's why when people take have like ayahuasca trips and stuff or any profound kind of experience, 
they won't shut the fuck up about it. They want to tell you all about how much they know now, and <laughs> all of their friends are like, Jesus Christ. I wish John would shut the fuck up about this. Like, no one cares that he met the eagle of truth with the ruby eye of wisdom and its talons. It's like, shut the fuck up, dude. Where do you got to go to work? And again, like, that's part of the process. You initially become aware that there is a broader world kind of determined not so much by the physical actions you take in reality, but by the mental, psychological, emotional, and spiritual vibrations that you are attuning to. So you become let's say, familiar with it. You get introduced to it, then you start becoming familiar with it. And then inevitably, I mean, I don't want to say inevitably, but most people fall into this oscillation pattern. This is, if you look at the foundational kind of elements of reality, they oscillate, right? If we look at sound waves, if we look at other forms of frequencies, there's an oscillation to them. What that means is there's an up and down. That's what oscillation is. It's an up and down. It's a synthesis 101 type of vibe. And that is literally what constructs our physical reality. Now, if we start drilling down and we get into the quantum world, and I know this stuff is like, it's all like, for a lot of people, just like pseudo-scientific metaphysical mumbo jumbo. I'm sure if you're listening, you're not one of the people who believes that. But it, this is literally how things work. If we drill down to the quantum level, many of those rules break up. Part. We recognize that the observer principle is in effect, that if we're looking at something, it actually influences what the thing we're looking at. Is. If that doesn't show you alone that there's some relationship between consciousness and material things, I don't know what to tell you. But basically, as we discover the core building blocks of reality, we recognize, in duality at least, there is an oscillation principle, right? That means up and down. It doesn't mean straight shot up. It doesn't mean a singular line going in one way. Now, there are many different types of oscillations. If you're familiar with synthesis, you got sine waves, you got square waves, you got triangle waves, you got sawtooths, and they look a little bit different. They all look kind of how they sound. So you don't necessarily get the same type of oscillation at all times. And then on top of oscillations, you have a frequency band, right? So we're getting a little esoteric today, guys. So the frequency band is the spectrum of frequencies that you can perceive, right? We know this from radio. You tune your radio to a different place, 96.4, 101.2. It's a range. It's a spectrum of frequencies that you can tune in a receptor towards, right? And this is what we are naturally doing while we perceive and live our lives. The question is, is how do we then tune our frequencies right, and oscillate in a way that feels fulfilling, authentic. Um, I, I, I hesitate to use the word comfortable because it's not always comfortable. Like that's just an aspect of duality. But how do we find kind of that balance or equanimity when things are challenging and difficult too? Because that's one of the things that I've noticed happens when you are kind of shifting timelines, jumping dimensions, whatever you want to call it unplugging from the matrix is your life will necessarily change it's not going to remain the same right like i think a number one mistake that new kind of explorers of this realm anticipate is that i'm going to imagine a version of myself that is complete is fulfilled is happy is successful and by imagining that, I will immediately be carried to that state with nothing else in between. It's almost like a quantum leap to that state. And I'm not saying that can't happen. It absolutely can happen. I've performed many jump cuts in my life. But to think there won't be kind of an energetic exchange um, or price to be paid in some capacity for that jump cut doesn't really add up, right? There always is kind of some level of change that needs to take place because you can't be the same person. If you think all that you're going to do is attract the things you want to you because you want those things and you're going to be thinking and feeling the same way that you do where you haven't been experiencing those things, where maybe you've been operating from a lack mentality. Maybe you've been operating from a place where, you know, things just aren't working out or it hasn't been working out or your past is completely determining your present and future. You're fucking tripping. That's just not how shit works. You actually have to fundamentally move to a different version 
of yourself. It doesn't mean you change your clothes, you cut your hair, you do. I mean, you can do those things too. And I think you see a lot of people try to do that with like identity stuff. You know, they'll start putting on all the jewelry and the bracelets and the headdresses and start talking in a weird way and start talking more slowly and how they envision someone who was living in a state of bliss would speak. And you can always tell people who are authentically doing that and the people who are just kind of putting on airs. It's not that difficult to tell. It's one of the good things about, I think, um, all of this like overexposure of social media that people are getting is like we're getting a little bit better at tuning into people's bullshit and like just like non-authenticity and I think that's why you can see like the weirdest of things kind of pop off and go viral at times because it's not something you would peg as like a formula for going viral it's just someone purely being their authentic self and people kind of recognizing that that seems to be like the main aspect of virality right now and that's good that's a good thing it doesn't mean we have to you know sit through hours and hundreds of hours and thousands of hours worth of people trying to emulate and copycat or like break down how to do that yes it also means that but it's okay it's not the end of the world people are just figuring things out but remember that if you're worried that like you can't do this there is plenty of evidence that anyone can do this one of the reasons that i started speaking about this stuff is like if i can do it at any point then literally anyone can do it it's not like i have some special ability some preternatural amount of faith or belief or skills to kind of alter and change things in my life it was just based on pure kind of testing things out practice uh, uh, um, a medium at most amount of faith um, a healthy dose of skepticism this isn't just for people who are like blind recipients of like whatever they hear that can be a wonderful thing too I mean that childlike innocence and being able to just like be trusting of what is going on when someone tells you the truth that can you know set you free so to speak that you are in control of your own life that external circumstances aren't determining what's going on for you no matter how compelling that narrative may seem um, if you can believe that with open arms and open ears and clear eyes clear hearts open hearts can't lose then you're, you're good to go. But it's hard. We As we go through life, I think it is very easy to fall into the belief or mindset that the world is a certain way. You kind of have to, you know, contort yourself into a shape or belief system that fits in with the way society and culture works. And even though we have examples that that's not really true, that people who seem to transcend aspects of culture or or culture or society or rules or authority um, are rewarded and are successful in various ways. It doesn't mean their lives are perfect. It just means they have, have kind of crafted and forged a life for themselves that seems to be transcending what the, the, the narratives in the zeitgeist are. We see examples of that all the time, every day, right? We do. It's not like it's hard to find. But it's also just as easy to believe that there's evil in the world, that things are getting more fucked up. I do believe that cynicism is an easier thing to do. It's like playing the game on easy mode and you don't really get too far and you kind of get caught up when you find examples of things um, not fitting into that, right? We have a, a tendency in our minds to want to fill in the blanks, right? We always want to fill in the blanks. We're always looking to solve problems. It's one of the reasons that, so many of us have trouble being bored or not have, you know, when we don't have something to do, we kind of freak out and we we don't know what to do in those moments because we are kind of on like problem solving like status all the time. It's kind of like a weird evolved sense of like fight or flight. Like what do I need to do to make sure that everything is okay? And that type of thinking in and of itself is is not necessarily bad, but when it's applied to I need to do something to feel X, I need to do something to get X or be X, right? That's when it starts to get weird because you actually don't. It doesn't mean you don't take action. This is another kind of mistake that a lot of people make is it doesn't mean you just sit back. You didn't just, you know, order some situation to yourself and you do nothing. Inspired action is a huge part of kind of living the life that you want to live because that's mostly what people want to experience is that they did something 
and received something for it. So that usually means in the form of career or relationship, um, travel, whatever it is, like you want kind of that trade-off. That's one of the benefits of being in a physical reality is you get to experience all of the wonderful things that exist in a physical reality. You're not just imagining these things. They're not just these ephemeral dreamlike states. Even though this is kind of a dream, it is something you get to like touch and you get to feel and experience and it's very convincing and it's very kind of uh, hard to break out that this could be anything but a real and definite place. But then when you start experimenting a little bit more, so you've gone through the awakening process, you become aware that there's some other thing going on, you get a little bit more familiar, you recognize that there's this oscillation kind of uh, situation, these ups and downs, this amnesia like forgetting and remembering, playing the game of self and other, all of this stuff. Then you get to the point where you're like, well, what the fuck now is going on? Like I recognize I'm kind of creating this perception of this reality. There are other people, there are other things. It's not like there's just me, but at the end of the day, the only insight I have truthfully into what's going on is my perceptions, my consciousness. So what do you do then? That's when I think a lot of people start getting into this idea of A, gratitude, and B, service. And service has this kind of like Mother Teresa-esque like quality to it when people first to come across it where it's like, oh, well, I, I got to be, you know, serving the good of all humanity and I want to solve all of the issues in the world and make this place, you know, a utopia. And like, yeah, yeah there's an element of that. But I think service is more about just being the most authentic representation of who you feel yourself to be when you can align that with like a non-judgmental place of love. And that sounds super corny and I'm sorry that it sounds corny, but that really does seem to be the blueprint. One of the cool things about it is it doesn't take away your edge. It doesn't take away any kind of aspect of what you're doing in life. It really just amplifies it. But it is a very particular quality of love that does that. It's not one where you kind of, it's not conditional, right? You're not doing it to get something, whether that's attention, whether that's fame, whether that's affection, whether it's money, whether it's anything, that's that has nothing to do with it. It has a lot more to do with kind of just embodying the best version of yourself and also recognizing that if you don't live up to that potential at all times, it's not the end of the world. You're not being asked to be someone like this automaton robot who ex exists and acts a certain way in the best possible version all of the time. So being gentle with yourself, being able to genuinely kind of forgive yourself and others if they're not living up to your ideal and you're not living up to your ideal becomes a huge part of this because what is unlocked by embodying that state has a lot to do with being able to move through the world relatively fearlessly, relatively in a state where you don't have to get freaked out by every twist and turn that comes through in your life, which is inevitably going to happen. You cannot predict down to the science, down to the degree, what is going to happen in your life. There are deaths, there are illnesses, there are unexpected twists and turns. It's how you deal with those challenges, chaotic kind of vortexes that determine kind of how you feel. And if we know how you feel is going to determine how your world goes, it kind of makes it, uh, it, it, you want to do as much as you can to operate in a state without fear. It doesn't mean you don't get kind of the impulses of fear. It doesn't mean that you don't get afraid of stuff. It just means you're not making decisions based on a place of fear, right? When I originally was speaking about this stuff and I was mentioning threshold guardians, fear is one of the biggest ones. Oh, you're not good enough. You can't do this. Yeah, there are so many reasons it can't happen. Um, it's not possible. You're not this type of person. You'd need to do this. You don't have the resources, blah, 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 blah. Even though, again, we have endless examples of people where every reason you can find that it wouldn't work, you can find someone who had the same disadvantages and maybe even more and was able to do it. You know what I mean? Like, that's the real truth of this. There's plenty of examples that negate what your reasons are, but some reason when you are focusing on yourself, those reasons become very real and kind of insurmountable. So when you can get to a place of genuine 
presence and unconditional love starting for yourself starting with yourself then you're really on to something then you get to operate in a place of kind of like i said fearlessness moving through difficult situations it is a naturally energizing force it will allow you to summon energy when you think you don't have any that's one of the most amazing things i think when you really start to discover kind of the power of your own like innate divinity your spirit your mind your emotions you will find like oh my god i was exhausted physically psychologically emotionally but then i found something that really engaged me right really just like spoke to me and all of a sudden I had a ton of energy I was able to do these things and that should show you that there's not like a finite resource of like energy that you have but it is kind of like connecting the right cables I don't know why like all this is like making sense to me in like musical senses and like synthesis and like plugging things in but that's kind of what it's like it's like making the right connections between the inputs and output outputs aligned with the things you genuinely care about that will allow you to get into a state of really having this stuff flow and I think a lot of it comes down to that is how do we get into a state where we're able to modulate our beliefs and feelings relatively easily where it doesn't feel like a matter of effort or willpower or struggle to kind of evoke change but it kind of feels like a natural thing that we're able to do and of course there are other things you can do to kind of like accelerate this process I really am a big proponent of kind of just physical movement. I don't want to call it exercise necessarily, but just like walks, being out in nature, listening to music, connecting with loved ones, loved ones. Like these things are naturally energizing and put you in resonance with a state of kind of unconditional love. Not because you're trying to get something, not because you're trying to make yourself a more flowy, amazing person, but just because it puts you in a state where that more naturally is evoked. And that's really what we're doing. The imaginal techniques, if anything, are just showing you that there's a connection between a desire and its fulfillment. Everything else is really kind of left up to interpretation. There are no hard and fast rules about how to do this. It's why there are a million different teachers and manifestation coaches and people who tell you or are able to tell you kind of mechanisms of how reality works. That's amazing. That's great. But at the end of the day, it's going to be up to you to figure out what works for you. There is no one size fits all for all of this. There's no magic bullet. If there was a magic bullet, we would have found out by now the Internet is not that big of a place. It's pretty easy to kind of like determine what's going on. You know what I mean? Anyway. Feeling, though, at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for. Right. That is really like that feeling of how would it feel? If I were the person I wanted to be, or how would it feel if I had this experience? How would it feel if I were in that relationship? That's all you need to care. You do not need to care about the specifics. It's why I almost always recommend when people want to do like significant partner, significant person, imaginal stuff, please don't make it a person. Don't make it a specific person. You're, you're, you're probably really not that great about picking out the specific person you just don't know what's attached to that what you are really really amazing at is knowing how it would feel to be in a perfect relationship if you really spend the time to analyze what does that feel like what does it feel like to live in a state of abundance what would it feel like where's the feeling there knowing that you didn't have to worry about money knowing that you didn't have to worry about the safeties and obligations and responsibilities that come around with like you know either being a parent what would that feel like when you can identify that and kind of amplify it to a state of conviction and belief that summons forth the reality when you combine that with a true intention and motivation that's based on unconditional love for yourself and for everyone around you not in some holy weird mother Teresa way but just a genuine state of faith and love watch what happens that's it and if you find that this is difficult, like I said, f figure out some ways. Listen, I've spoke about plenty of them. There's a lot of resources all over the place these days. What puts you in a state of that being possible? What do you need to be doing? What relationship to your body do you need to have? What states of health do you need to be in to kind of evoke that sense of clarity? Right? Those That's different for everyone. Maybe that does mean you need to take a jog every morning. Maybe you need to hit the gym every other day or a few times a week. Maybe you need to get plenty of sleep. Maybe you need to drink more water. Maybe you need to eat more healthy. Maybe you need to be more conscious of what you're putting into your body and what you're treat, how you're treating it. It's different for everyone. It's not like there's a, there's a right answer for that. Listen, when you're in your teens and 20s, 
you can get a little bit more leeway with like how all of these things are happening. There's a more natural expression and kind of reservoir of energy. I think one of the benefits of getting a little bit older, it's not that I'm old, I'm 40, but when you get a little bit older, you recognize the impact all of these things that you're doing are having on kind of your ecosystem, your personal kind of little universe that you've created for yourself. And so you you pay a little bit more attention. Oh, I, I feel like shit if I drink alcohol or if I only get four hours of sleep, I'm really not in the best place to kind of be the best version of myself the next day. And if it feels like sacrifice, that's the wrong kind of approach. This the stuff should feel like a fun, curious experiment with how to be the best version of yourself. That's really where all of this stuff starts from. And all of the experiences and the specifics and the outcomes, trust that they will be amazing, but don't try to necessarily nail exactly what they will be. Because it's not always possible to do that. It's not always possible to recognize what specifically is going to be best for you. I know I couldn't have done it. And I've whiffed on so many things that I thought specifically would be the thing to be the way that would make me feel the way I wanted to feel. No, it wasn't. But whenever I focused on the feeling of what it was that I wanted, sure enough, something came in to fill that void. So that's really kind of what the message is. Listen, we're in the middle of eclipse season. Um, shit is wild. Shit is weird. It is absolutely, I'm going to be upstate in the Lake Placid area, um, bringing the kids. We're going to be in the path of totality for this eclipse coming up on Monday. I'm super excited for that. I I remember when I found out about it like four or five years ago, I was like, I'm going to make that and it's happened, you know, somehow, some way, you know, and if you're able to check it out in the path of totality, I highly recommend it. Just know that there's a lot of letting things go with this eclipse. There's a lot of shattering of illusions. There's a lot of, of kind of just like leaving personal belief systems behind. If you look at kind of what the solar god deity represents, it's a lot of like not not just patriarchal stuff, not just like the the historical significance of it, but like identity stuff, right? If you think about your sun sign in astrology, and it is being obscured for a period of time and being able to question that identity and really shift yourself into something that allows you to feel a way that you are drawn to, that's powerful shit. You know what I mean? I think you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, I am excited for some guest episodes that I have in the can. I am going to be recording a bunch of episodes before I leave for Turkey. I've learned my lesson this time that if I have episodes in the can, it's going to be better. So I'm, I'm getting guest episodes. Um, I may even record some solo casts that I will put out in future months, even though I usually like to do them like the day of or the day before, just so they're like kind of fresh energetically. I may do that. If you have any guests that you would like to hear on the show who you think are aligned, um, I obviously have reached out to a bunch of people and have a bunch planned and have recorded a few. Um, let me know. Noah at SyncPodcast.com. I'm happy to check people out and see if they would like to come on. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's, uh, Patreon is fucking rocking. Uh, I say it every time. I really am happy with the community there. Um, I'm, I'm maybe going to be tweaking how it works and maybe adding some features and other things. I don't exactly know what it's going to look like, but like we got a really good, amazing group of people who are up and active there. And so I'm excited to continue to do that. Um, The coaching stuff, I got to say, has been phenomenal. Uh, You know who you are if you are in that program. Um, I've done this seasonally, so I will be opening up the next round of coaching sessions for the summer. But like because of like I'm going to Turkey twice, one in May, once in May and then once in June to uh, July to August. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it. I, I want to make sure that it's, it works for people in different time zones or because I'm going to be in a different time zone. So we'll figure that out. Oh, also, I should mention. Listen, I've said the crypto stuff many, many times. We are doing another crypto webinar. I believe it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's the 11th, April 11th, 411, Information Day. Um, If you want to sign up for that, the links will be in the show notes. The stand store has all the stuff. The crypto course is there. If you purchase the crypto course, 
right? Which really gets you up to speed on how to do all this stuff. If you've been hearing about any of the meme things, it'll get you right plugged into that. Um, once you get in the crypto course, you get all the webinars for free, right? So if you've purchased it and you want to attend the webinar, just shoot me a DM. And if you don't want to attend it live, it's added the next day. Like as soon as I record them, I put them on there. So the value is adding on that. I dropped the price on the crypto course, but honestly, I think I'm going to put it back to a, its original price, like in the next few days. Not as a sales tactic, but just because like the value is getting to the point where it's like, I don't even feel like this is what it should cost. Like it, it, that's that's what it's got to be. So I'm going to change that, um, but you can get it now. It's on sale and it'll probably remain on sale for at least another week. Again, in the stand store, all the places, all this stuff is, that's it. You guys are the best. Have a really, really awesome eclipse. I think it's going to be pretty profound for a lot of people. Just take to heart, you know, the unconditional love stuff. It really, it, it it's real deal. It's, it's when you can get into that vibe and really feel it, just watch how your life starts to feel. It's one of the most amazing things you can experience, I think, in life. And the, the, the periods where I've been able to kind of like exist in that state for months at a time are some of my most cherished memories. And I know there will be others and there will be others for you too. And I know that to be true. All right, lots of love, guys. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.